One of the most interesting chapters in the history of humans and conflict is whether or not humans sacrificed each other. Uh, historically, there are records, especially when the Spanish conquistadors and priests came to the New World. The Romans show human sacrifice in their friezes, their hints about it through the historical record, but did it really happen? There's been some doubt. So in the last 15, 20 years, archaeologists have taken new methods, bioarchaeological methods, where they study skeletons and isotopes to look for evidence of how the bodies were killed. In the 1920s, Sir Charles Woolley was an archaeologist who excavated the tombs at Ur, which is now modern-day Iraq. And what he found when he excavated the royal tombs was this amazing funerary procession that had been captured in death. So outside of the royal tomb of a king or queen, there were two guards posted. There were oxen carts with the oxen still there and the grooms with the oxen. There were courtesans lined up along the walls, dressed in the women in elaborate headdress. There were people arranged around musical instruments as if they were at a concert. In other words, this king or queen, they don't know who it was, had taken all their servants with them in death. Originally, Woolley thought that these retainers had committed suicide because he found cups and a giant vat and he thought maybe they drank the poison. And this was the prevailing view for decades since the discovery. But then a couple of years ago, a team at the University of Pennsylvania Museum CT scanned a couple of the skulls and they saw that underneath the helmets that they were still wearing and headdresses, they had been killed by blows to the side of the head along the temple. So they were not committing suicide. They were murdered and, and sacrificed uh, as part of the funerary ritual. Spanish priests had written in historic records about really dramatic sacrifices that took place atop high 6,700 meter mountaintops in the Andes of the most unblemished, beautiful children that the Inca had committed as offerings to the mountain gods. Archaeologist Johann Reinhard went out with a team and climbed to the top of these incredibly high Andean mountains looking for these sacrifices and indeed found in the late 90s and early 2000s mummies of children who had been taken to the tops of these mountains and sacrificed. The most dramatic example, the best preserved, was this maiden that he has called the Luliaco Maiden, named after the volcano Luliaco in Argentina where they found almost a perfectly preserved girl who was about 15 years old in a white feather headdress with all sorts of offerings of gold and silver statues. And next to her was a boy also in a headdress with a silver bra bracelet and a young girl who was maybe seven years old. When they studied the isotopes from the hair of these children, they found that about a year before they were sacrificed, their diets had changed. They were suddenly being fed a diet of the elite. They were being fed meat, more protein. And then about three months before they actually were taken to the mountaintops, their diet changed again. In other words, they were on the long trek eating stored grain. This is what the diet reflects on the way to the mountaintop. And when they get there, they also find traces of coca uh, leaf that had been used to drug them, probably before they were killed. Uh, coca leaves were stuffed in their mouths. So it's very interesting. It gives a glimpse of the last year in the lives of these children who were the sacrifices to the mountain gods. Violence gives us insight to these other humans and how they see death and life. For example, they're killing babies. They're killing children, which seems absolutely appalling to us that they're sacrificing them in these bloody rituals. But when you study this violence, you begin to understand that by offering children, they, these children are being deified. They're turning into deities themselves. Or when rulers take their servants to death with them, they see death as a part of life. There's an afterlife, and they're taking their servants with them. So it begins to give us a sense of their worldviews. And violence for them is another way to, to show how they display power, how they see each other, how they see their gods. And it's a clue to us, to the past, and to human nature and what we're capable of.